Minister, this is the last day of what people call Black History Month. Um, what have you seen this month that you liked and what have you seen that you didn't like? <laughs> um, I've seen a lot of very interesting um, sort of talks that people have given about black history. I haven't attended them, but I know that they've been, they've been happening. And I'm really pleased that people are thinking more about black contributions to British history. So I've liked that. Um, what I haven't liked, maybe perhaps uh, interventions that seem more contrived, perhaps because they, uh, certain organisations feel that this is something they need to do. So they do it, but not necessarily in a meaningful, in a way that I think is meaningful or shows that they are, are interested in it. And to be honest, I think Black History Month, it's, it's become much bigger than it used to be because a lot of people are doing different things, different things with it. It's an American, it's an American import, which hasn't always fitted exactly with what I would call uh, British and Commonwealth Commonwealth history. But um, what I'm also seeing is there's politicization happening in every sphere, and I see it happening even there, where um, Black History Month becomes Racism History Month, which isn't what it should be. It should be a time for us to come together and look at uh, contributions which haven't always uh, been taught because they are, you know, they might be seen as very niche or they're just not traditionally what people thought should be in the curriculum. Is your point that um, what we call Black History Month is, in a sense, become White Racism History Month? I think, I think that's, that's, that's a way to put it. And I remember last year, I was absolutely horrified. I said this in a speech in Parliament. My seven-year-old came home from school and said, we're doing black history in, this, uh, in school because every other month is white history. And I was absolutely appalled by that. That is not what it's supposed to be. Black history is British history. It's history that every black or white person or Asian person should be interested in. It's not something specially carved out, particularly worrying for my daughter, who is mixed race, where she is being taught that this is a special kind of history that's different for her. And I don't want her to have this sort of, um, sort of split identity. I, I think it's not helpful for people to look at uh, communities as being so separate. We should be looking at what brings us all together. You were reported as saying that you were less concerned about colonialism mm. than some other people might be. Uh, surely um, slavery and colonialism are pretty big mountains in the history of most black, or many black people in this country? They are, they are, but they are also one of many, many things that affect, um, that affect black people across the world. And the context of that conversation was actually talking about Nigeria. It wasn't talking about this country. And if you go to Nigeria and talk about colonialism, certainly from the part I come from, I'm a Yoruba person, people will say, well, look, I well, colonialism. And basically that means, why is, that, why is colonialism my concern? And that's because the debate in that country has moved on to contemporary issues. So, yes, colonialism is a fact. It is something that happened. But you look at what's happening in Nigeria at the moment with extreme Islamic terrorism, with the value of the currency completely um, being uh, decimated, with the economy not doing well. There was a really interesting article in The Economist about, about Nigeria. Those are the things which concern Nigerians today. And as a first-generation immigrant, my family still live there. Those are the things that I'm very interested in talking about. And there's also a more important point around this, that when we focus on the things that have gone wrong uh, in the past, you know, certain elements, we also stop thinking about the things that make countries successful. White people don't have to talk about the Crimean War or the Suez Canal and so on. Why is it that when it comes to black people, we are again restricted to specific topics which we need to demonstrate that we are correct or saying the right things um, on those things. And why is it that a debate which you can have very easily, and a, an opinion that is actually more popular in Nigeria, that colonialism is not the root of its problems, is something that cannot be said in the UK? I think that's an interesting question. Well, let, let's, let's look at that. Is that really true that people would say in Nigeria now colonialism isn't, not that it doesn't matter, but it's not that big a deal. When, for example, Nigeria is itself mm -hmm. uh, a consequence of a colonial division of Africa. Absolutely. I mean, nobody in their right minds would naturally put Yoruba yeah. and Igbo 
in the same country. Yes. That was a consequence of colonialism. Yes. And Nigeria's more recent history is completely shaped by that. You, you can't really say colonialism doesn't matter because no, Nigeria that's, wouldn't, that's exist, not, that's, that's wouldn't not, exist without but colonialism. That's not what, but that's not what they say. If, in fact, that is the biggest issue when you look at, and I'm, you know, I'm straying into, into foreign affairs now, that is the country and the way it has been constituted workable? I think that's what um, was alluded to in that Economist article. I think we need to look at those things that do make countries well run. Looking again at um, free trade, looking at free markets, having very strong rule of law, property rights, all of those things. Those are the things that people should be talking about now. It's not saying that colonialism had no impact or it doesn't even have a lasting impact, but what can we do about uh, the problems that a country faces today? And I think that's where the argument should be. And there are many other people who are having the debate about race and colonialism. I don't think that that's wrong. But why should I be forced to have their opinions? There is something changing in the way that we, in, in the way that we have debates in society now. That it isn't about different opinions, it's about allowed opinions and unallowed um, opinions. I'm often reading about how I'm under fire. Here. It, when, when officials bring, they bring newspaper articles to me and it's minister under fire uh, for saying this. I really, am I under fire? I don't feel under fire. And then they show me some very angry people on Twitter who I haven't actually taken any notice of. Black Lives Matter movement had a huge global impact. Broadly speaking, a good thing or not a good thing? Um, I think with the phrase Black Lives Matter, very much a good thing. We have been able to focus a lot on where there's discrimination in society or across the globe even, where there are disparities, what is causing those disparities. There's a lot of work in government, um, which we've been doing, in order to find out uh, what is causing differences in outcomes and what we can do about them. I think that that has been a good thing. Where it has become a vehicle for smuggling in other themes, probably less so, because those, many of those themes are not values which I share. But that doesn't mean that it should be stopped or, or banned. You know, I believe in freedom of speech and freedom of expression. It's a different, um, it's often quite, uh, when you look at the, you know, defund the police and other things, the people who claim to speak for that movement, uh, what, those things that they put forward or they purport, I do disagree with those things. So I don't think those are, those are good things. But in terms of focusing on how we can improve disparities and reduce prejudice and discrimination, yes. You have uh, responsibility for the Hold Equalities Brief. Uh, we've been talking about race, but of course one of the hot issues right now is trans, uh, what people call trans rights. And that's been become an issue partly because of what people can, uh, can say without being contested or cancelled or whatever mm. the right expression is. Um, the big example recently has been that of uh, Kathleen Stock, at Sussex University, yeah. who it is thought may lose her position because she is what's called a gender critical feminist, i.e. she believes in the biological reality of sex. Where do you stand on this? So on Kathleen Stock, I was appalled at the way that she was treated. And in fact, I, I went to Sussex University and I tweeted when I saw the university statement backing her. Nobody should face bullying or harassment in the workplace. That is actually another thing that the um, that the Equality Act looks at, uh, bullying and harassment. I don't think she should lose her job. And I think that she has every right to hold the beliefs which she does. And I think she is probably in step with the majority of the population. And what we in government are trying to do is show that we do believe um, that trans people should be free to live their lives as they wish. But where people see a conflict, and that conflict has tended to be around single sex spaces and um, whether gender reassign and, and the definition of gender reassignment and how uh, gender critical feminists, as, as they are known, believe that those rights are in conflict, what we can do in order to um, provide clarity. So the government position is that uh, we will do everything we can to support trans uh, people in particular, all LGBT people, but trans people in particular when it comes to health care because they have different uh, health care needs from other LGBT people. However, we do not think that that goes as far as self-ID, 
we do believe that there should be a process to get a gender recognition certificate um, rather than for people. And, and the process does mean involving medical professionals as well. Some trans activists would say that the fact that you do not accept the statement that trans women are women is in itself a form of violence. You are what is called a TERF, a trans... I, I, trans, I, I, trans exclusionary radical feminist. I, I think it's sad that the, the debate has turned into one of name calling. What I would ask people to do is actually look at what the policies are, what it is we're doing in order to protect people of all types, uh, whether they are LGBT, uh, of different race, uh, racial backgrounds, uh, the different sexes. We are a government that believes in equality and fairness for all, and everything we're doing is to make sure that we have a, a, an equal society. And we should not get to a point where having a different opinion becomes a reason to insult other people. That's absolutely wrong.